What's this? Well, this is an LG 32LE 4900 television and it's got its guts exposed because this was um, broken when I got it and uh, this main board here wasn't working well actually no it's got a bit of a history first fault was that the HDMI uh, inputs here stopped working on this board so it went off to a TV repair shop and came back again unfixed because you can't fix things these days apparently um, it's just too hard to get the parts so um, that was fine, carried on working for a while, and then it just went completely dead. And that's when I got it. So, obviously, first thing I do is uh, go on eBay and get new boards. So, I went through the process of getting new boards on eBay. And uh, replacing these boards one at a time until I'd replaced all of them, and it still didn't work. So maybe the boards that I got were faulty or maybe there's some sort of software setup that's needed in some EE prom here or something like that I don't know it didn't work so then the symptoms at that point were no display no backlight um, and then you're pretty much stuck because you can't do anything had a look around tried to find circuit diagrams and some sort of service manual for this thing and you can get a service manual for a similar module model the 4500 but the only schematics you get are this and for some reason none of the component numbers match but I think it's a very similar board so there was a possibility of fault finding on this board but unfortunately you've got these big chips which are probably proprietary and a lot of firmware it's just going to be a pain. So I checked all the voltages, everything seems fine, nothing's blown up. As far as I can tell, um, everything is working perfectly, except that you don't get a picture on the screen. So what I did then was I actually bought an entire second-hand television, which supposedly was working, but it had some PCBs, the power supply and the main board stripped out. So that's actually what is here the original the original television is here <laughs> so I've now got completely new boards from eBay on a completely new television and this one still doesn't work either so I was getting a bit fed up at that point and um, started looking at maybe doing some reverse engineering of some of the PCBs in here now, it turns out that even though there's an LG service manual, it doesn't cover these boards here. And I found out why. This one is made by someone, I don't know who, I suspect LG, but I don't think there's much documentation, but it's pretty straightforward, it's a power supply. These two, it turns out, are made by a company called AUO, and when you buy a display module from AUO, you get this aluminium metal bit and that board and that board and you can get the data sheet for it because it's here so when you look in here it's a display module great big display module with two connectors one connector is here which is for the uh, backlighting and the other connector is here which is for the data now the pinouts and everything is in, in the data sheet so now we've got a chance of actually reusing this thing. So AUO modules are used in lots of televisions so the only bit I think that LG did is these bits and maybe the speakers, the plastic, the buttons maybe and the PCBs that drive the buttons and remote control. The rest of it, AUO. Now this is quite nice because it means I think we stand a chance of just chucking that in the bin, using the power supply, the LED inverter and the uh, TCOM board here which is the data board. All we need to do is just wire everything up as it is here and put something else on the end of this connector and this connector here um, 
which is power supply for this board, but there's also a couple of signals. There's an error signal for the backlight and there's also um, a signal to turn the backlight on. Now that's easy to fake up with some sort of circuitry or a processor or something. So what I needed to know was whether the backlights are working on here or not. That's stage one. If the backlights aren't working then the display isn't going to work. So I'd have to go in there and fix the LED strings or something like that. Now I've never seen this thing turn on when it was in its faulty state attached to this board here. But if you leave the T-Con, well we can put it in, doesn't really matter. If we put the uh, cable for the T-Con connector in. Now using the data sheet I've got the LED connector pin out, this one here. And it's, it's really simple. There's 24 volts, ground, there's a status detection, which I think is coming out of this board, which is saying there's something wrong. It's an open collector um, pulled down by a transistor and open collector if there's a fault. There's backlight on, which you can either just leave open circuit and it should turn on, or if it's low it holds the backlighting off. And then there's a couple of PWM signals for dimming the backlight. So, first thing I did was have a look at this connector to verify that the pinout of the datasheet matches the PCB. Now it doesn't, which was odd. So on here, the power supply and ground is marked. All the signal names are marked on the PCB for this connector. The power supply and ground, that's fine, they're the correct way round, but the four control signals seem to be inverted. Now, I've checked over on the AUO side and they've actually very nicely labelled test points here with the signal names and they match the data sheet. So as far as I can tell, the signals that are going into this board are exactly as the data sheet says, but the signals that are marked on this board, on this connector, are actually incorrect. So what I've done is just pull out, you can see it there, that's the backlight on signal. I've just pulled it out of the connector, um, put a bit of tape around it, I don't want it dangling and touching anything. So hopefully this will turn on. So I'll plug it in. Obviously this is all live now, so you don't want to go touching that. Um, and over here it's 24 volts for the um, LCD, so this must be generating 24 volts, but 24 volts is coming through here, so I think maybe it just switches it because... Well, actually, no, there's higher voltage here. There's 24 volts going in here, so this board is generating higher voltages as well. So if I turn it on with the on button, you can see the backlights have come on. So that is working. So... At the moment, this looks like a working display unit, working power supply, that doesn't work. T-Con board we don't know about, it's powered up at the moment, but we don't know. I'll turn that off again, and the lights go off. They're going on and off just because the power's going on and off, there's no control signal turning them on and off. So the reason the backlights are off when it's in its fault state, well, this one's a different board, but in the fault state that I've got here, the reason the backlights are off is because this board is holding off that backlight on signal. It comes out of this connector, goes through here and into there. Uh, so there must be some sort of fault, or that board thinks it's got a fault. I've tried both boards. This is the original one. It's got my little original symbol on there. Neither of them work. Exactly the same symptoms are absolutely nothing. The remote control works and there's a little status light here which is coming and presumably from here but even though you can turn it on and off with the remote control nothing. So what I'm hoping to do is get a some sort of HDMI or VGA to LVDS um, adapter board which will replace that let me turn this off we will replace this board here and it will give us HDMI or VGA or whatever the board provides to LVDS and that's what this connector is carrying here. So we'll need power but we've got that from the power supply we can plug this connector into a board somewhere and this carries two channels of LVDS data and I've had a look at boards you can get boards which should provide the right 
data to the TCOM board. So hopefully the backlights work. We should, all we need to do now is get data on the display and that's here. So I think there's a left and right LVDS here and two channels come in and it's all defined in the data sheet. The, even the, um, let's find it, even the uh, bit patterns that you need to send in order to get pixels to light up. There you go, there's a table there telling you which um, pixels and what sort of colour you will get for different pixels being on, all the timings here and everything. Everything here, which is really nice because that means that this display module is now just a component like any other component. And as long as we drive it with the right signals, it should work. That's assuming that the display, this part of the display is working. The LEDs are. So what I'm going to have to do is make up <coughs> some sort of adapter. I've got these, which are FFC adapter boards. So coming off the board that I'm going to buy is usually just pin headers. So those pin headers will attach onto this board somehow and then I'll put a 51 pin FFC on one of these connections, assuming one of them is the right width. These are 60 pin and they look about right. Let's check that. Yeah, so that looks... Actually, let's check the spacing. What sort of spacing do we have there? Find one with the right spacing, that could be a problem because I don't think they. Is it the right spacing? That might be the right spacing there. Yeah, so it's 0.5 millimeter, I think. Yeah, so it's 0.5 millimeter. So what I'm going to do is use this board, solder an FFC on there, that will plug in there, connect whatever I need to that power, which can come off this connector and control signals and maybe there'll be a microcontroller or something in here. There'll also have to be a signal to turn the power supply on and off and obviously the remote control won't work, sand won't work but it will then be just a pretty large, admittedly, <laughs> a pretty large 1920 by 1080 monitor. So that's the plan. It's not going to be a television anymore and because I've got two I've got two uh, modules, I will uh, probably have a go at getting both of them working. Once one's done, the other one's just simple, just do the same thing. And I've got quite a lot of spares, I've got three inverters, no, two, yeah, three inverters, three TCOM boards, two power supplies and two of these, which are junk, so I'll probably uh, decap some ICs or something on there, just for fun. That's probably a massive chip in there, but there might be stuff I can salvage off there. Um, well, looking at it, yeah, maybe there's some interesting inductors there. A few connectors, SCART socket might come in handy, maybe in the future. And a few ICs, some of them might be useful. So I'll probably just strip those for parts because this one I know is bust, waste of time, and um, this one doesn't seem to work either. I suppose it does mean that at the moment it looks like everything over there is working. So I suppose I could have a look at getting another one of these boards on eBay, but I don't know. I'm not sure it's worth it. As long as I can get HDMI or VGA into this, I think then you can put whatever you like on the other side. So that's the plan. I need to order a connector. Board's on order. When that turns up, we'll have a go at getting some pretty pictures on the display. Not just turn the backlight on.